My name is Jason. This talk is on examining the bit squatting attack surface. Um, for those of you who are regular DEF CON attendees, you may remember a talk from a couple of years ago. There was a talk by the name, uh, or by a man by the name of Artem Dynaberg. He published a talk on bit squatting and uh, registered several domains, which ended up getting traffic and kind of showed that it works. So if you know what if you know what uh, typo squatting is, then you'll be, able, you'll be able to understand the concept of bit squatting. It's not a whole lot different. So where typo squatting is registering a domain name that is maybe confusingly similar why, that somebody might mistype on a keyboard. Uh, bit squatting involves actually registering domain names that are one binary digit different. So if you think about the way domain names are represented in the memory of the computer, uh, most computers use ASCII. And so there's going to be a series of binary digits that represent each character that formed the domain name. And I've got an example here where twitter.com can flip a bit and become twitter2.com. So really there's nothing fancy about this tack. It, it really involves nothing more than registering domain names. Uh, but this was a great talk and, and I was really impressed by it and, and hats off to Artem Dynaberg for being the first one to bring it to everyone's attention. Um, this is a view of the ASCII table, at least a lot of the characters that are in the ASCII table and, and their binary representation. I'm purposely not showing things like the ASCII control characters. Uh, actually ASCII was, was a specification that was built a long time ago, back in the late 50s and early 60s, back when we still had printing teletype machines. So uh, several character codes that are in the 7-bit ASCII table are things like line feed control codes and, and various you know, other control codes like delete. Uh, when you had a printing tape and you made an error, uh, the reason why all ones in 7-bit ASCII is the delete character is because they would just print ones all the way across and that would signify, oh, we made a mistake and, and would let them move on in, in terms of the, <coughs> excuse me, the printing teletype. So, um, there was actually people who argued back during the beginning when they were making the ASCII specification that they shouldn't include lowercase characters at all. Uh, other people were arguing that we should have the, the lowercase, uh, uh, very lowercase letters interleaved with the uppercase. So you might have a big A, little A, and so on. Uh, but this ended up being the final sort of ASCII specification. It got picked up in the early 80s with the advent of, of personal computers. But this is really where we get the landscape for which makes bit squatting possible. And in my previous example, the R in Twitter I've highlighted here, uh, you can actually see that there's several other characters that are part of the table which are different only by one digit. If you were to flip a zero into a one or a one into a zero, you could get all of these other things. And so what Artem Dynaberg did was proved he registered a bunch of domains and proved that he was able to get traffic that was being misdirected his way as a result of uh, memory errors, errors that uh, occur in RAM which are passed into whatever application, usually your web browser that's, that's doing the most damage. Uh, he did talk about some of the causes. So these are the main causes of bit squatting errors or, or bit errors in, in memory. Uh, cosmic rays, you know, they're, they're quite frequently hitting the earth 10,000 per square meter per second. Uh, heat, I think the upper range on the iPhone uh, operating temperature is only 95 degrees. So if you've been carrying your iPhone out around Vegas, you've been exceeding those operational parameters. There's an interesting uh, paper that came out earlier this uh, year about nuclear explosions and using DNS requests. And, and bit errors in the DNS request to actually determine when low yield, yield nukes have been, have been exploded. And then finally also defects in manufacturing. Uh, so as I started thinking about this, I, was, I thought it was a really unique idea. You know, typically I'm used to being the one making the mistakes uh, and, and, and having all the problems boil down to, you know, human errors, you know, missing a semicolon in your program or whatever. Uh, this is the type of thing where you've done everything right, but because of an error in the memory, all of a sudden your traffic is going to some other place that you didn't even uh, intend for it to go. And so uh, one of the characters that's particularly fascinating is the letter N, which by a flip of one bit can become the dot. And while that's not one of the necessary characters uh, according to the RFC for, for DNS names, 
uh, it does separate the various parts of a DNS name. So if we have an N inside of a domain name that can become a dot, you can do some interesting things like the domain name Windows Update. If you take that first N and convert it into a dot, uh, you end up with the domain name dozeupdate.com. Uh, similarly with the Symantec Live Update. And so we registered some of these. And these were some of the queries that we were getting from, from the internet. Uh, lots of people looking to download Windows updates, but instead of going to Windows update, they were going to our domain, Doze update. And again, here's a similar example for the Symantec live update. You can see that the N uh, flipping into a dot causes their traffic to be directed to us instead. Uh, because it's bidirectional, you can also have dots that flip into becoming a letter N. So uh, one of the best examples that we registered was the ytimg.com. They use this content delivery network in a lot of their domain names, or I mean in a lot of their web pages to serve, serve content. And what we did was replace the dot that separates the third level subdomain name from the second level and then registered the entire thing. So we've registered snytimg.com. Another interesting one was the state of New York. So uh, every state in the United States has a state dot something dot US. Uh, you can basically replace that second dot there from, from the right with a letter N and, and see some traffic. So here's an example uh, from YouTube. It actually has a referrer from YouTube and this was going to our snytimg.com domain. And here's an example. The OMH subdomain is actually a real subdomain at the state of New York. It's the Office of Mental Health. Uh, but we were getting lots of different requests from them. So outside of the characters that, that are within a domain name itself, there's other ways uh, that we found. Um, and, and part of the inspiration for this idea came from this slide which was originally published by Artem Dineberg in his 2011 research. And if you look at this graph, you'll see that the most popular BitSquad domains that he registered all happen to be associated with web applications. And so I started thinking about that a little bit more and you know, here's the general structure for any URL, uh, an, an HTTP URL and you'll notice that there's uh, a scheme, host name, path and so on but there's a couple of places, and I'll highlight them here in red, where we have forward slashes. And so if you think about bit squats in the context which, we, which they most likely appear is going to be inside of, of web links and there's a relationship between the letter O and the forward slash where by the flip of one digit one becomes the other. And so how can we use this? Well if you've got a domain with the letter O in it in the right place uh, you can actually attack domains which weren't uh, possible before. So you see I've got some examples here in the dot mil uh, top level domain. I've also got some examples in .edu. These are protected domains where I wouldn't be able to register a domain ordinarily but by taking advantage of the nature of the O inside the domain, flipping to a slash, what happens is it ends up cutting off the URL early and the traffic ends up going to some international uh, or country code level domain. And so we've got several examples here. Here's an example of an EDU. This was uh, um, this uh, first example, uh, ecampus.phoenix.edu. And so we registered ecampus.ph. And here was actually a request. Somebody has a smartphone and they've got a uh, icon on their home screen. And whenever they click the home screen, uh, one of the byproducts is refetching the Apple Touch icons. And so that's actually what you're seeing here represented in this request as a, re a request for the Apple Touch icons. Uh, we got similar stuff from uh, uh, some other domains but I'm, I'm going to leave those examples. Those examples are in the white paper. The, uh, the, as the bi continuing in the bidirectional nature, not only can you have an O turn into a slash but you can have slashes turn into the letter O. And w why is this uh, important? Well, the browser uh, actually allows or kind of silently fixes errors that might occur as a result of this. So if you can imagine you've got a domain like uh, slash dot here but imagine that the second slash from the left turns into a letter O by virtue of a bit error. Uh, what happens is the browser sees HTTP colon and a single slash and then a domain name and thinks oh 
this must be an error, I really need to take you to this domain o slash dot. So it will actually helpfully redirect you to the wrong place. And uh, here's an example of that. Again, someone fetching their Apple Touch icons. They've got a slash dot um, I, uh, web web links basically stored on their home screen of their phone. Uh, I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing a lot of traffic from mobile devices, honestly. Uh, let's see. Am I going the right way? Okay. So we've got. Uh, additional URL delimiters that are possible. So the letter C has a relationship with the pound character. And people that uh, work in, in URLs will be familiar with the pound character. It basically shows you where you've got an anchor tag. So if you can imagine a full host name with a letter C in it at the right place, when that C turns into an anchor tag, it actually cuts short the domain. And a couple of really interesting examples here, PKI, .nrc.gov, that's the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, I actually did buy that domain so no one else would be able to. Uh, PKI.nr is in Nauru and uh, it took a while for them to, I, you have to register some of these domains by faxing a paper in and, and stuff like that. So some of these country code uh, registries are a little bit uh, less organized than others, let's say. Uh, but some others here, we've got a, a CDC.gov uh, happens to be have a have a bit squad at emergency.cd, which is the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, and uh, cuscg.mil and .us. So some interesting examples there. Um, this is an example here, <coughs> uh, basically showing the, that the browser will will happily. And if you see in the location tag, it's going to a .us domain name. That's what the browser is basically helpfully correcting for us and sending us to the wrong place. Uh, let's see. This here is, uh, yes, an, another example. This is an interesting one in uh, that the, the, the C, if it even, if it has a dot before it, will still work. And if you look at the location bar here, you'll see the real location that you would be going to if, in fact, the C uh, in dot CN was to flip into an anchor tag. So these techniques will still work even with errors in the browser. So these are interesting uh, URLs and, and, and the domain delimiters, but we also took a level at the or took took a look at the top level domains. So most of the top level domains don't have bit squats, you know, .com, .net, so on. There are some in .dot .pro and .dot .coop are the exceptions. They actually have a, a, an O based slash sort of bit squat present, uh, but the CCTLD bit squats have several depending on where you're at. So. Um, there's some domains that only have, uh, have, have no bit squats in the country code space and some that have several. In fact, the Ivory Coast has ten different valid country code level bit squats. And so, you know, what's sort of possible with this? Well, we've registered a domain name uh, based on the Kremlin.ru domain, but instead of .ru, we registered .re, which is Reunion Island. And we got this request for a news page, basically. And so I pulled up the corresponding page inside of the Kremlin.ru page just to show that, yes, this was a real news page that someone was requesting, but they were coming to Kremlin.re instead, which we weren't going to be able to serve that content. Uh, I have here another domain that we registered for this test. Uh, Europa.eu is the European Parliament. Uh, and so we registered at Europa.mu, and you can see we're getting a bunch of MX requests here for Europa.mu. Uh, these are all valid subdomains at, at Europa.eu, by the way. Here is some SIP uh, DNS requests from the German federal government. So uh, we registered a couple different domains there, bun.ee, which also happens to be a typo squad as well as a bit squad. Uh, but we also registered bun.dm and we were seeing similar things out of both of those. I think I might have another example. Yeah, here's some MX requests. Um, if you were to look up the IP addresses on some of these, you'll note that some of these requests were coming from uh, inside of the government of, of Germany itself. So what about all the new uh, generic top level domains that are coming out? You know, what could be possible there? Uh, well, using some of these previous techniques, you could actually uh, register a bit squat which would, which would allow you to bit squat the entire top level domain. And I've got a few 
uh, here. I think one of the most interesting out of this list is dot exchange, which is supposed to be used for, you know, financial exchanges. Uh, so if you were able to register this xj.ge in Georgia, you could potentially receive bit squats for any domain registered under dot exchange. There's some other uh, bit squats that are possible in the new generic uh, top level domains. These are based on the letter O. And you can see I've got uh, several here like dot boo, dot bio, and the corresponding country code top level domain where those, those bit squats exist. As well as ones based on the letter C. So I'll leave these here as reference. So uh, something more about the CCTLB uh, bit squats. There were some uh, interesting ones and you would think at a domain name uh, registry like .uk where they only allow protected, uh, you know, it's a fairly protected registrar. You can only register third level domains at, at .uk. It's got to be something, you know, .co.uk, .net.uk and so on. So uh, it turns out that the .uk has a, a one bit error and you become .tk. And so I started looking at what was available at .tk and there's several of these. Uh, probably the most interesting out of this list is the MOD which is the Ministry of Defense in the UK. So I could, uh, I didn't register this. I think uh, they've registered it now so it's not available anymore. But MOD.tk was available for a while and you could have potentially been eavesdropping on the Ministry of Defense. Uh, but there's several others and these all match the corresponding second level registration at .uk. So you could potentially get quite a lot of traffic there. Uh, so just kind of closing up here, you know, this is obviously there's a lot of domains out there which are possible to bit squat and even in protected uh, uh, registries like .gov and, and so on. Uh, so far the current mitigations were to use ECC memory or, or buy up all the domains so that no one else could register it. Um, but uh, we, I think that there's some, some better ways around that. So one of the ways that we actually saw used in, in practice, and I don't know that they were necessarily doing this on purpose, was uh, Amazon uses kind of a roving uh, domain sort of um, def defense here. And if you look at the source code from some Amazon pages, you'll notice that they have this domain cloudfront.net. And normally the, the O in CloudFront would make these perfect bit squat domains based on the letter O flipping to a slash in the country code .cl, which is Chile. Uh, but what they do is if you look at that third level host name, that third level host name changes every time they recompile some code there. I don't know exactly why it changes, but it changes about every month. And so if you were to go out and register one of these domain names, you probably wouldn't get much traffic in the month before it changes. So I thought that was an interesting defense. Um, I also noticed that a lot of these um, bit squatting uh, problems happen as a result of URLs in web applications. And so limiting the amount of times that the URL actually appears can help you. So uh, instead of using absolute links, if you use relative links, then you're not going to be putting the domain name in the link. And web pages are stored in memory basically the exact same way that uh, they're written originally. So that can help you. And also using capital letters, there's less, these are some uh, other, the capital letters don't have the same equivalent bit squats as lowercase. So using capital letters in some cases can help you avoid certain bit squats. Uh, but possibly the, the best mitigation is a response policy zone. So with a response policy zone, you configure your DNS server to look for requests that might be one bit different. And uh, I have an example here uh, of PayPal. Uh, if you had an RPZ, you might look at a request coming to you for RayPal and think that's probably a one bit error and I'm going to silently return from my DNS resolver a no such domain or maybe redirect them to a walled garden. So in that case, uh, you do have to be careful of false positives though, like this RayPal.com is a real site. So, um, to that end, you definitely have to monitor for false positives when you're using this technique, but configuring this at your DNS resolver basically takes DNS out from the ability of the attackers to be able to register the domains in the first place or de-incentivizes that. And to that extent, we do have a uh, RPZ generation script. So if you have a list of fully qualified domain names you want to turn into an RPZ and deploy on your resolver, uh, we're releasing a, a Perl script to help you do that. Uh, it's also going to be available on uh, the Cisco uh, blog page. I've got a blog page that's coming out just in a little bit here in about 10 minutes. 
and you'll be able to download the code from there as well. So I, I hope that you found some of these new bit squatting attacks interesting and I really hope that people are going to go out and, and try to do something as far as fixing up the resolvers and, and making this problem go away because if more people did that then bit squatting wouldn't really be uh, an issue at all. So thank you. <laughs>